Well, you got some time. All right, so we talked. So uh, first, I need to say that the last members meeting um, we talked about. We had a really ambitious agenda of what we wanted to do, um, and everyone seemed really excited. Almost everyone signed up for a few groups to participate in. Um, that was the good news. The bad news is that no one was assigned to be in charge, um, and I allowed people to just take their own initiative to do things, which was not the best strategy. So the board and I discussed this in depth, and what we decided is that we'll pick one campaign, one project to work on, and everyone can, in their own time, participate in this project, which I'm going to present to you now. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the Freedom Riders. The Freedom Riders were a group of people, uh, black and white, who came from all over the country <coughs> and were trained to go to the South and uh, do sit-ins at restaurants and other places uh, that were only allowed whites in. Um, they actually also had a group of people called the Freedom <coughs> Walkers, but nonetheless. So wh what we're going to do is, we're, our project is called Freedom Walkers, and we will, after a training, go throughout the city of Camden, walk through the streets of Camden, target young adults, and talk to them about the opportunity of education. We'll find teenagers, people in their lower 20s, people that are our age, and just tell them our story. Tell them who we represent in Young Urban Leaders, the type, the type of work that we're doing, and why we think it's important for them to get connected to education. Based on the training that you'll have, you'll know what to say. Um, you'll have some information to share with people on a few programs that you can refer people to. Um, from my experience in doing this, most people won't be interested in what you're saying. However, everyone will know that someone took time on a hot day to walk on their street and talk to them about something that even if they're not interested in, they know in some way is important. Now, I've done voter registration in this city for a very long time. I've had all sorts of interesting experiences and conversations with people. Um, one of the reasons why training is critical is because I want you to know what you're talking about. Dr. Lauren Hill, who I've known for a long time, she's a friend of this organization, will do the training for the S. She works at Camden County College now. She's now the director of EOF. She'll train on what a college-age student needs to know, um, ex ex especially a student who's already going to college and had to drop out. Our very own Kyrie Golden, guidance counselor at Leap Academy, We'll talk um, on the perspective of what high school age students need to know about what they should do. Um, many of the students you'll talk to will already be in a school that has a guidance counselor, so it just may be as simple as telling them the types of questions they need to ask, uh, telling their parents that I'm going to need your tax form at some point, letting them know that so that they can fill out their financial aid. What I want the conversation to end with is with you being comfortable giving the person that you talk to who has truly expresses an interest uh, for you connecting them saying, I'm going to help you. Now the help that you give is going to be pretty quick because it might be as simple as you just meeting at Camden County College one day and, and going through the application process, although they can really do the application online now. Um, it may be as simple as them just calling you and asking you a couple of quick questions. Uh, so this is not a, this is not an end, this is not an in-depth burdensome mentor relationship. This is specifically on helping people get connected to education. Paul brought up a really good point which is that you can help a person get into school, a person can go to school, but they may not be mentally ready for it, which is why we have to be really honest when we have that conversation with people about it. And understanding that maybe that first time you talk to them, they're not gonna sign up, but even if it's a year from now, two years from now, they'll remember the conversation that we had. It's also a way for us to promote this organization and let people know uh, what's going on. So that's the idea. Um, so Saturday, June 18th, Saturday, June 18th, two Saturdays from now, at 10 a.m., we'll, the training will, will begin. Um, it's in the electronic classroom, which is in the basement of the Paul Robeson Library. Um, I'll have signs in there when you go in, but if you're familiar with the library, when you go in, you make a right to go down the steps, and when you go down the steps, you just it's, it's basically right around the corner. Everybody will have a, have a computer, it's a nice cool room, has two projectors, um, and we'll have you out there by 12 o'clock. Um, I want to have as many people in that room as possible. And if you are not able to come to the training, but you're interested, the training will be recorded. And if you want to do it, you, will, you, can, you can, but you will have to take and pass a quiz that you'll be given. Because I don't want people going out in the street not knowing what they're talking about, assuming something is true or something used to be true but not true anymore, because some of the stuff changes. 
I mean, it used to be financial aid did not pay for summer courses. Then for many years it did. And then with a cut that Congress did this year, once again, this year, um, financial is not paying for summer courses. So things do change and you need to know what's going on right now. Any questions, comments, concerns, issues? Yeah. Cool. I got a couple questions. <laughs> um, all right, one, if you're talking about stuff that, that that's that kind of like in depth, the training is going to have to be fairly in depth. So I'm get, I'm going to have to like prepare a little bit more than I originally thought I was going to have to for this. But two, how in depth do you expect these street conversations to be? Do you think it's going to get that far to the point where you need to know the small intricacies of the processes and stuff? And I'm the, the reason why I'm saying it is because I, I don't believe that you're going to need that much information. Okay, I, I completely understand your point, and I agree with you. Um, I want us to be prepared for the one out of ten person that does have a situation or does have a question. And I'll give you an example. A really common problem that I know a lot of people have is I used to go to college. Um, I took a loan out. I dropped out. I didn't continue. I owe that college money. Um, they, I, I can't get back in until I pay that money, and I don't have $600 to pay Camden County College. And, hey, I want to go to class. I want to go back to school. But I don't have that $600. What do I do? Right? How many of us can answer that question right now? I was, I'm going to be given a training, and I would say, hey, that's what you're going to have to do. So I'm... Right. Well, well there, I mean, well, is, well, for one, that would be Lauren Hills. That would be on, that would be on her part. Okay. Any, anyway. Okay. Because you remember, you're focused on the, on the high school aspect of it. All right. We're going to have to talk. We will. About, we will. Okay. okay. Any other questions? I was just going to say one comment on that. Um, I think the, the user's issue is that you, you want to give the kid enough that he's interested and he wants to make back contact with you or the next time he see you, he might want more information. Um, but also what you don't want to, and that's why it's, it's better to have all the, a lot of information, you, you can't say I don't know. You can't be out there talking to a kid and then you say, I don't know that, I don't, I don't know that answer. I think they made a, a, a valid point though. I've been doing it for about 10 years now different organizations throughout the city. And um, a long conversation to kind of destroy their attention and make it short and sweet and try to find key words that they connect to and relate to to be able to understand. But the long conversation, I think, could have turned them away. Unless they show an interest, you know, from the start. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and this is a, a thing where um, you don't have to sacrifice uh, quality for quantity. You want to talk to as many people as possible for that person who wants to have a conversation about it. The research shows that even if that person's having a conversation saying um, where they're telling you why it's not important for them to be in school and, and you're engaging in the conversation with them, they're going to still think about what you're saying. They may not show it to you, but they're going to still think about what you're saying. Um, and and, and there, there's a parallel with this with voter registration, where if, you tell, if I'm telling you I'm here to register people to vote and you tell me I don't vote, I don't like the government, I hate politics, you give that person one rebuttal, and then if that person continues on that same thing, you just move on to the next person. Um, but there's still a benefit from what you did. So for people like that in that case, Kent, or somebody that doesn't have the time for us, should we make a flyer or a business card or something that we can leave for them so that when they have the time or when they realize that they want there, that they are actually interested in the conflict? I will be meeting this week, um, we, we talked about that, I'll be meeting this week with a person that does graphic design and designing something to give, to, to, to put in people's hand. Um, but it's, it's a thing of, you know, even, even in, in the marketing world, they tell you, when you give out your business card, act like you only have five, right? You don't give your business card out to everybody. And I know some people may just give their business card out to everyone. I know people, as soon as I meet them, they just give me a card. I'm like, you know, I don't even know who you are yet. I don't, you sound tense. I have no interest in tense. Um, in what? Tense. Mm. Yeah, 20 by 40s, you know, they sell tense. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't have an interest in that. But but yeah, we will leave something in people's hands. Yes. Yes. Could, um, since you have a connection at Camden County, is it possible that we could get some of these kids out to the college for a follow-up? Like, if we're meeting with them, um, and they're not interested, we could always offer them, well, you know, on such and such date, we're going to have a trip. So, Because the, they have college trips for kids who go to high school, but we're going to run into kids who actually don't go to school. 
so they wouldn't have that opportunity through their school. So what I'm doing, what I'm doing this week is um, a meeting with Teresa Smith and Gary Divins. They are the dean and assistant dean. And last last week, Paul and I went to a press conference here at Rutgers, and um, I briefly talked to the president of the college about about this campaign. Um, and what I want them to do is to be prepared to talk to these students in a really honest way, but in a really accommodating way too. So what do I mean by that? Um, one of the biggest factors in a person's college success in a community college is uh, where they, how they do in the placement test. So a lot of people say, I wanna go to college, but I don't wanna take these three, four, some, you have reading, writing, and math, right? If you do terribly in all three of those, that's nine classes that you have to take that you're not getting credit, college credit for, that you're also paying for. I mean, even, even if financial aid is paying for it, still, you, you, know, you still see that as being paid for. A lot of people aren't willing to do that because they see that, you know, can't, what, what do we know community colleges as? Two-year colleges. Well, if you're taking nine classes and you're not getting credits for it, there's no way, there's no way you're getting out of that, out of that school in, in, um, in, in two years. So maybe a way to, maybe a way to address that is letting people know up front that, you know, I, and I can say it too. I, I had to take, um, I, I took two remedial math classes. I took math skills two and math skills three. My senior year of high school, I didn't take math class. Um, my, my, my junior year teacher was terrible. I didn't do well in it. And I, I got out, you know, I have a, I have a degree now. So um, I hear what you're saying. I don't, I don't know if like an open house type of thing is, is appropriate because I'm not sure if this population will go to a, a, an open house. The trip thing um, is a possibility. Um, I'd be interested in doing that if they had students in the school that were that were partnering, partnering students from Cam that were partnering. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to them about that next week and get more information. But, I, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I, I am not pleased with how Camden County College reaches out to this to the Camden community um, and one one how it retains students to the standards it has for stu students. Um, I, I have a philosophical disagreement with some of the administrators there. Um, however, it is the best, it's still the best option for a lot of people that want to go into school. Right. So it's a thing of balancing these things and, and making it work best for the student. Any other qu questions or comments? Do you have a question? Bruno answered. I was, it was uh, aligned with resources. Well, we have resources to get people here. Yeah. yeah. Any other, okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. You can start off here. So I do want to still be.